Hi, welcome to the Mohua Show. My name is Mohua Chinappa and I am an author, entrepreneur and ex-housewife. This podcast is about everything from business to technology to arts to lifestyle but done and spoken imandari se. Hi, in today's episode we have Archana Jain. Archana Jain is a senior advisor and consultant at Purple Audacity and insights and strategy consultancy. She's a career market research professional. She's got over 20 years and she's a mom for 27 year old child, unbelievable. Fitness enthusiast, a traveler and a reader and is trying to reconnect with her inner writer because she believes we all have a story, which is really true. Which is waiting to be told. She strongly believes in the need for women to be financially aware and independent, which I completely agree with her. Whatever be the circumstances, she wants to share today her experiences and help other women grow from weakness to strength. So, welcome, Archana, in today's episode. Thank you, Mawa. Thank you for inviting me over. It's lovely to be here. Do you feel that women are hesitant to invest? Yeah, actually, I I feel, and I've seen that in my own experience. It's not that the hesitancy. at times may be coming because of their financial circumstances but at times it's often also because uh, growing up we've all been you know dad will take care of it uncles will take care of it later when you get married the husband will take care of it and all the women uh, typically end up doing is have a few stashes here and there for their own you know so called pocket money or their discretionary spends but uh, but they don't really uh, they're not really part of the investment decisions in most of the households i completely agree with you so on growing up and talking about discussions or decisions on investing how involved or uncomfortable did you feel because when i take look back at my own uh, situation in life i got you know i think we all come from that same generation where we got married at, in our 20s and you know in your father's home you're really not talking about investing really ever you're just investing in your in yourself and in your career and after you get married and you move into you know your uh, home with your husband i was never ever involved in any decision as far as uh, the investing of our assets was concerned and that left me over the years become so insecure that i could not put myself together to even participate in any conversation uh, you know around uh, investing and um, i think i eventually became insecure but comfortable in this uh, understanding that i am not capable so did you also feel like that and how did you overcome this Oh you are actually so right uh, you know growing up like you said in you know this was not a topic for family conversations so Absolutely. while i might have you know being, being in a joint family i might have heard my dad and uncles talking about money so somewhere it's kind of getting into your head but then i never saw my mom or my aunt sitting down and having that those family discussions they were doing what they were the mom or the aunts were given a certain budget and they, their job was to balance that budget and just make sure that everything kept smoothly running other than that they did not have any real role to play and uh, in my case so so growing up i don't think we were ever part of any such thing it was never discussed openly so there was no uh, let's say financial education happening at the childhood level or the or the family level uh, once i got married um, you know initially it was really not exactly like this because i was uh, working at that point in time and you know we were we started out in agencies so you know how the uh, you know you're just basically struggling from for the salary to uh, the pay slip to pay slip so at that point in time you're just pretty much taking all your money and just trying to make ends meet really for all of us for all of us yes. yeah, absolutely and uh, gradually as we started earning more uh you know for me things changed probably when we took an assignment overseas and when i actually stopped working for a bit you know to bring up my uh, two young children and then uh, like you said mahua actually i got very very comfortable and at a point you know i said it's okay i have money when i want to spend it you know and and then uh, that's how it kind of continued i got very comfortable it's not like as as a family we did make investments and my husband would keep me informed but i was not not really part of that decision making uh, you know even the first house we bought was you know one day we decided and you know it it was purchased i never even came down for the purchase so i would say that yeah we tend to get uh, comfortable in our own zones and we just leave this to the men because that's what we have seen uh, most of us have seen uh, happening as we were growing up so you know when you uh, when you talk about being comfortable and you talk about uh, women and um, money and decisions that women make you know when they get married and um, you know in financial decisions that they make 
I think uh, in many marriages across, and this goes for all our listeners who are listening to us right now, is this that women move cities. And I will say this to you from my own example. I mean, I was raised in Delhi. I had an absolutely flourishing career in Delhi. And I moved to Kolkata, you know. And uh, yes, I'm a Bengali, but I'm originally from Delhi. And uh, my business was Delhi-based. And uh, fortunately, I uh, did get a job, you know, with a PR agency. And I uh, called Genesis PR, which is among the largest PR agencies in the country. I went on to head their branch. And um, then I was pregnant. And I came, we had to move cities because I had a pregnancy which required me to take rest. And I had to take a sabbatical from my career. And when I came down, invariably... Um, I was always compromising on any work that I was taking up because, uh, you know, I always tried to get a part-time consulting after my son was about 11, 12 months old. I was doing full-time work, but in my head, I just wanted to be left off by 4 o'clock uh, by the time my son would wake up and I could take him on the round of the pram in the, you know, around the neighborhood. But what happened in the process is this, that um, invariably, a man's income keeps going higher and higher and a woman's self-confidence goes lower and lower. And this is so proportionate. You know, it just proportionately grows and it proportionately reduces because uh, for working women, um, and I think for everybody actually, I will not put that as a bracket for working women alone. I, anybody who becomes a housewife becomes extremely dependent on the man. And just the whole sense of what you're doing at home, of raising a child... I mean, you can buy a house, you can't make it a home. So there is no value added to that, you know. And uh, like you, me too, I was never part of any investment decisions ever. And um, yes, I started believing that I uh, do not have the intelligence to think uh, finance. And I never had the courage to become an entrepreneur only till uh, 2018 when I began out on my own. Because all along, everybody told me that, oh no, you know, I don't think you can manage money. Uh, and um, I think this is for so many of us. And just to bridge this gap um, is why today, uh, you know, we both are talking, Archana. And, and I'd really like you to tell me a little bit about, you know, do you think that there are companies today, I mean, there's millions of companies all around, okay, who talk about wealth management, you know, there is a company specifically for real estate management, because in India, we understand gold as an investment. And we understand um, real estate is an investment. I don't know how many women, how many women in maj, you know majorly are there on the stock market. I would really like to see a surge there. It's a very very male dominated um, industry. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask you: Do you think that there is a lack of relevant advice as far as gender is concerned? You know, with all these companies that claim that they will help you, um, you know, with financial advisory. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, that's to some extent true. And I've fortunately not had a very bad experience as far as my advisors go. But uh, I think you're right to an extent that this uh, this is something which these advisors are not really very sympathetic to women, nor are they, you know, they don't empathize. And for them, it's like a very structured, you know, put in this for every year and you'll have a retirement benefit coming out of it. And so they're not talking our language. For example, I, I remember when, when I initially started uh, investing finally in, uh, you know, 2015, 2014, and I'll, we'll come to how that genesis happened uh, in a bit. But I, I did find that, you know, for me as a woman who was starting into invest, investing, um, I wanted still some control and I still wanted some uh, stability in my investments or uh, for example, I got into the habit of just putting, you know, making a recurring deposit for a couple of annual needs which I had. So I, I know every year I want to take a holiday. So I would just set aside some money every month in that. And I think I got very dissed for that. Uh, so it, it's not, it might not have been the, you know, most growth oriented way of investing, but it gave me that freedom. So rather than, so, so, you know, if the investment advisors are a little bit aware of what women typically want, right? I, I'm sure you empathize with this. Absolutely. This is the kind of need we yes. have. Yes. So, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing. Then I want to, uh, you know, have a annual budget set aside, which I can just pick up from and do up, redo my house whenever I wanted to. We, we all love to do that kind of a thing. So it could be something very simple as that. And the, the thing is that the moment you have somebody empathizing with you and talking to you in that language, the bigger things become much, much simpler right so uh yeah i think it 
there is just a matter of sensitivity. You know, they're doing their job, but their whole focus is on growth oriented, retirement plan, things like that. Whereas they need to understand what is the kind of savings or what kind of investments are women more comfortable with. Do you feel that, you know, if you go into a firm and there are lots of people there, you know, that may not be the best setup for a housewife or a woman who's taken a break from her career. And uh, and do you think an individual financial advisor would be a better bet, you know, for women who obviously they feel very insecure asking these questions. They feel, uh, you know, that they should ask. I, I mean, I will talk for myself and millions of other women that, you know, you don't want to appear stupid because you are very scared of being taken for a ride because it's money and everybody around you is advising you, be careful, be careful, be careful because nobody wants us to take risks, you know. And um, without risk, there is no gain, you know. And do you think that uh, it is better to go with an individual person who will tailor make these things for you or into a boutique firm where there are, uh, you know, lots and lots of clients and you just become one of them. Uh, just from your own personal experience, I would like to ask uh, you this question. No, I would say the individual matters in this. It's like you would go to a doctor you trust, you know, so you build that relationship, the bedside manner, there's so many things which matter. So the whole fact that the person you, are, you, you know, you're kind of uh, consulting with and who you are working with on uh, how to handle your money the best needs to be knowing you as a person. And I've seen that, you know, Early on before I got, I'm currently, I have an investment advisor who I've been working with now for almost well, five years or more. Uh, and earlier on, it was like the banks, you know, the moment they say you've sold something, there's a big bunch of money sitting in your uh, account. They will just try and come and tell you, up ye investment, laga do. you know, put it into this, put it into that. This will give you retirement benefits. God, I don't want retirement benefits. I want my money to work for me. And this becomes uh, extremely important in my kind of a case because in uh, around 2015, I was forced to take a break because of family circumstances and other things happening in my life. And uh, if I had just gone by, uh, you know, and so I sold a property and I, if I'd gone by just listening to the bank guys, I wouldn't have uh, been able to run my house. Uh, so finding the right kind of investor, investment advisor really, really helps in such a circumstance who understands you, who's sympathetic, empathetic, and is not f trying to shove his own thoughts and, uh, you know, thinking uh, into how you invest. Rather, the person needs to, it's literally how a doctor takes your pulse, sees all the uh, measures, understands, you know, that kind of a thing, and then comes back with the proper solution for you. So uh, definitely an individual advisor really, really helped in that case who also helped me to firstly understand that I should, you know, leave this whole attraction and that whole thing which we Indians have of holding on to your gold or your property, etc. I mean, it was a, and after that, I think I've convinced quite a few of my friends, ki, you know, guys like, just think about reshuffling your portfolio away from uh, property. Because I, I realized that for a, you know, whatever X amount of house, uh, value house which you ha are holding on to in the market the return on investment if you look at it as a rental is barely two percent so that's when you know that thing stuck in my head and uh, this is how I got educated on how you should actually put your money in ways which can actually work for you so taking away uh, money from say a house, I'm not saying everybody should go and sell their houses but if you have like a, a thing to uh, you know nest egg which is put away in a house and you have the issue of uh, you know suddenly finding yourself at the end of a divorce or anything like that when you need to then fend for yourself you know jobs gone for some reason uh, then you need to be able to consolidate your uh, investments you need to be able to consolidate your assets and become a little uh, practical about the whole thing be very objective I know this house for x amount is getting me a 2% ROI. If I was to take out that money and put it into a, even if I was going to put it in a bank or a fixed deposit, I would get at least 5% or 6%. That can run my house and give me a rental equal to that, right? So I'm earning more. And this is the very, very simple format. And of course, you know, none of the advisors will ever tell you to put your money in the fixed deposits because it's not really going to grow. You're not going to be able to beat inflation also. So you have to then find a balanced portfolio, some things which, you know, for example, if you have uh, X, uh, you know, 100 rupees to invest or you have a portfolio worth, say, 100 rupees, you would, uh, you know, anticipate your future needs. That when are the big spends coming? For, my, for me, it might be five years later, my, you know, or 
I'm talking, talking about five years earlier, I would be thinking like in five years, my son has to finish his graduation. So I need to have money to take care of those four years, four years of expenses. Therefore, out of that 100, if 50 is going to go there, or X amount, I need to have it in a uh, short to middle term kind of investments uh, or a portfolio, which keeps earning me money, little higher returns as well. And uh, yet it's stable. So here I would not go for extremely high risky kind of investments. I would go for a moderate risk investment, which I can keep taking out and keep, uh, what do you say? Yeah, keep taking it out as I need it in a planned manner. And there would be about 30 or 40%, which I would keep aside in long-term investments. And here again is where men and women differ. I think we women have a little bit of more, uh, you know, stable outlooks and we don't get hassled. Although we are the emotional creatures, we do not get hassled so much. A lot of men would, oh my God, the stock market has gone down to such and such extent. Let me just, you know, let me do something to make up for it. Whereas I know that, okay, this 30, I had kept aside for my, for my long-term planning. And therefore, uh, I will not bat an eyelid. So when you took all these decisions, Archana, I mean, how did your family and your friends and people around you who you trusted, were they um, worried about you? Were they skeptical? Because I'm sure it was a change that you were bringing into your personality. And I do find that with myself right now, you know, right now when we are sitting and talking, I am in the midst of taking decisions about selling off a property and creating, you know, maybe apartments out of it. And everybody's been telling me that, no, 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 you know, you need to keep the land and the land will grow. And I don't know, I mean, how long I will survive, but I want to definitely create my own studio. I'm going to take my business forward. And, uh, and there are days I'm extremely insecure about, uh, you know, whether this is the right decision I'm taking or not, you know. So did you have these sort of challenges also with people around you? In my case, it was, uh, I mean, I, oh, I may be a little bit them. of an outlier. So it uh, it did not uh, bother me to that extent. But I have seen this with many, many friends. Yes. I, you know, after my whole experience with a divorce and then having to suddenly become very financially savvy and take care of not only my immediate needs, or my kids' needs, but also my long-term needs and, you know, secure my financial future. I had to uh, do a lot of juggling. In fact, forget about others. Initially, it was me myself who was questioning myself in terms of, oh, if I sell all my properties, then I won't have a house, you know. So that kind of a thing. So it is also about educating yourself. And once I believed in that, like I said, I sold this concept to so many friends, you know. So uh, it's all about having that confidence uh, to you know, just take those decisions, people will question, but ultimately it's your life, Nova. So, you know, we need to be able to stand our ground. I think this is where the It's whole really interesting are. that you talk about, uh, you know, that these are the decisions you only took after you had your divorce. And, uh, you know, this is for the listeners because, you know, this pandemic, I have uh, spoken to counselors and I've spoken to psychologists and the number of separation and divorces has just spiked up. And there are so many women out there who are trying to navigate their own lives, you know. And uh, my heart actually reaches out to housewives because uh, they are given pocket money and uh, a pocket money how a student would be given for the for a whole life. And here you are investing your years and years, you know, into uh, a house that you make a home, you know, children that you make them to become human beings. And um, so this is very interesting because, you know, you've navigated this divorce to work uh, for you and not against you. And there are many women out there uh, who would really benefit from this advice uh, coming from you as to what are the first steps that they need to take if they are to be in a situation like this. Uh, yeah, especially for any of, you know, our listeners and the friends who might be facing such situations. I think the first uh, step, and I'm talking from my personal experience, is to acknowledge the writing on the wall. It's not going to go away. And this is, you know, my friend, this is what it is. So now you have two options to either just kind of cry and, you know, pine your life away or get back on your feet and make something out of yourself and ensure your own future. Because I'm sure a lot of women, especially the ones who are housewives, uh, even, even the working women, because uh, I will digress a little bit here, is what I've seen is like a lot of working women, especially, uh, and I mean, all women, working or non-working, they do not have assets to their name. So all the family assets are in the husband's name, typically. Always. Most of the time, yeah. And you might be lucky, like in my case, I did have some joint investment. So like I said, I may be a little bit of an outlier, but I have seen many, many friends who do not have, who are totally dependent. Like you said, they're getting their pin money or their pocket money or the house money. And, you know, that's about it. 
and uh, it's not just the ones who depend on the husbands for uh, for their uh, money it's even the working women because typically what happens is then you start pulling in and you start running the houses and all the investment decisions most of the time end up being taken by the husband so when you are in such a situation you may or may not have anything to your name very recently i was talking to a friend of mine who's also into wealth management and she came across a woman uh, you know in bangalore who she was talking to and who's also again navigating you know her separation and her divorce and um, she was constantly defending by saying that no you know he's got the car for me and yeah, because i think you know we do a little dance in our head saying that no there was a car that was bought and you know the house was bought but after a bit when things were really delved into the car that was bought for her was actually in his name uh, the property that was bought was in his name and uh, you know she was really devastated and so it's very important i think also when things are being bought it is extremely i know it sounds very very because uh, money is a dirty business that you talk between family you know it's 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 a it's a very uncomfortable subject for most couples because you would like to believe that you're going to lead the lead your life uh, forever and ever and ever you know you're bringing up children you're creating a home um do you think that women uh, we need to really uh, normalize the fact that whenever any asset is bought that this has to be looked into by an external uh, person that the woman trusts as much as the man trusts and um, this should become like how you know i often uh, used to read about this that there was a time when people were getting married and they wanted to check whether the man had aids and the woman had aids and you you know you check out on all these medical um, things between each other and then you decide to take on the plunge because this is marriage is very practical marriage isn't uh, you know we both have been married and we know what it's like it's a very very practical um, accommodation of two different individuals who have to come together to create a home so do you think achana you feel that uh, the this is also one thing that they need to add you know apart from um, you know checking i mean in india they still checking kundali and they believe that the kundali will work and if you're a mangling then you're not going to find the right person which is really interesting that um, you know i don't know how much logic there is to the whole thing but uh, do you think this should also become a part and parcel of the entire uh, nuptial prearrangement you mean a third person handling the the financial whole thing? part yeah because sometimes like mm-hmm. women like me i'm not savvy i'm not at all savvy when it comes to money matters you know and i wish that i had taken a lot of stuff uh, you know earlier i had taken decisions more wisely in the beginning than what i did so many years later you know of course an awakening is an awakening but um and why this podcast is because there are so many young girls who are going to get married and i don't know whether their marriages are going to last their marriages are going to stay whether you know and where do will they find themselves so that's the reason we as women who've gone through the entire experience do you think there should also be one person who needs to be uh, you know part of this whole number uh, mama i agree with you to some extent but i also disagree uh, and by by disagree i mean that it's not a person you know it's not you have to name somebody as the it to handle this it all starts with women being aware of uh, you know financial well being so forget about women even this is advice i give to my son also yes uh, you know every adult anybody who's stepping growing up in today's times and circumstances especially most of women i would say but everybody literally needs to be aware of what is out there what are the things you need to be watching out for how to plan for your future in the long term and therefore how to save where to save what does financial management mean it could be something as simple as okay every month i earn 100 rupees i will not spend more than 60 of it or 70 of it and at least 30 i'm going to put away however tough it might be because if i start doing that putting that 30 away i will have money to if suddenly i'm without a job i'll have at least three you know they say you should have three or six months worth of money in your bank if ever you are in that kind of a situation you will have that you will also be able to plan and work towards the uh, future uh future purchases any big things which you want to buy rather than just you know swiping your credit card and uh it's always an add on card also in most and cases. there is always an ad- i've had one of those earlier but uh, Me and, too. and uh you know i was uh, just telling a friend uh, the other day that a lot of women don't even have a credit card no they don't it is just unbelievable it's totally yeah. unbelievable so you know even while 80 per- uh, almost 80% uh, women do have bank accounts in our country i think there's a very small fraction there's a g- debit card usage and debit card ownership it's at least a 15 20% gap even in urban india i completely agree with you absolutely 
question here or the main issue to address is financial education. Are there any checklists, Archana, that you think that people need to make, you know, women need to make in their 20s, 30s and 40s? Because invariably when we are talking to each other, we are talking about women who are really at the far end of the horizon where they find themselves sometimes so insecure. Um, if you look at, you know, the survey, I think men will be a lesser number than women. So are there, are there any checklists that, uh, you know, you would advise in their 20s, 30s and their 40s? that they need to keep? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, call it a checklist, call it just some mantras to live by. Uh, I think when you're getting into a marriage, say, you know, one thing is when you're starting to work, you start investing, keeping aside some money into assets which don't have to get merged when you get married. You know, it's something you grow and I'm sure your, uh, you know, your partner to be or anybody else, uh, you know, your husband, if you're already married, would already have things which they must have also done. And especially in today's day and age when women are throwing their weight and, uh, you know, working uh, as well, it becomes extremely important to just keep it. At, it's fine. You're, you know, coming together doesn't mean everything has to uh, come together. So women definitely need to have that little bit of a nest egg for their own selves because we have seen, you and I have seen the uncertainty of how things just change. And especially in the last two years, we've seen Heard so many horror stories. Absolutely, right? yes. So, yeah. uh, no, definitely, uh, you should have something which is totally yours. Another thing which I would say is once you're in a relationship, you should be aware of what are your assets. Where's the money of the family? You know, what's where? It could be in anybody's name. You need to know what's happening because it's not just divorce. Sometimes, you know, last two years, we've heard of people, uh, you know, we were young people in their early 40s, 50s, just passing away and the women didn't even know where the money was. And she oh, there are really tons and tons struggle. of people like that. Yeah, so she yes. had to really struggle. So therefore, whoever, it doesn't matter who's earning, you know, whether both of you are earning or it's just the husband's money that you are, uh, the money, at the rest of it, you're, you know, investing so much of your time and effort and everything. So uh, you need to be aware. You need to firstly know where the family assets are lying, how are they distributed, etc. And uh, like I said, to have something which is totally yours and to co-own the family's assets. I think that is the only way we can, you know, that's one of the biggest way women can safeguard their future. Because in your 20s, when you're all rosy-eyed, you don't know where life's going to take you. Absolutely. Not, right. So, uh, yeah. And uh, if you are ever in a situation where you have to deal with things, be practical. Like I said, acknowledge the writing on the wall. Do an audit of what you have today, jointly and separately, do a total audit and then consolidate. Having consolidated, put your money to work. Archana, you have an Excel sheet. Tell us how oh, yeah. do you map <laughs> oh, my tell famous me Excel the sheet. tools about your Excel sheet. I'm dying to know that because I get so intimidated even if I have my media interviews on my Excel sheet. How do you manage that? Oh, it's actually fun. And you know what? It was my crutch or a tool which it was like people do rosary beads. This became like my rosary bead in my early days of navigating. You my... need to repeat that. Your Excel sheet became your rosary bead. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> How wonderful is this, you know, for the listeners to know that you need to also become tech savvy to understand and read and know that how is it that you need to keep all your planning, like the way you do your prayers in the morning, your exercise, you need to do this every day. So tell me more about the Excel sheet. Oh yeah, I will tell you about that. So, uh, well, when I started out, I think it was one of my uh, dear advisors who suggested that, you know, map your expenses. You know, you should uh, start budgeting because like I said, in that life when you kind of got very comfortable with the, you know, nice income coming in and kids growing up and you having all this nice condo living and all that kind of stuff, you become, you let yourself go, right? So you just, ah, okay, I want to spend something, I'll spend the money. I don't really bother about how much am I really spending. Here was the time to take a hard look at what is, where is my money going? How do I spend my money every month? I didn't have, did not have a clue. Except for the rent, I did not have a clue. So that's when I made this Excel sheet and I put down all the key. And I started very simple. I started with household expenses, right? From rent to electricity, to gas, to my groceries, to my kids' fee, you know, clothes which had to be bought on a regular basis for my son or, uh, you know, any anything like that or my own because you know, if I'm working, I need, uh, I need to refresh my wardrobe. I'm just taking very simple examples here. So I just put it, I committed it all to the Excel sheet and then uh, I just started entering it every single day because look, by this time I had done the other steps I just talked about of consolidating and uh, knowing what my assets were and then literally knowing here's what I have, right? Uh, so 
it gave me a great comfort to keep on going back to one the you know longer term plan sheet and this everyday expense sheet because that way i knew that i had control and i was doing things in a very thought through manner i was not blowing up my money i was still living a very comfortable and i had, i did not compromise on my standard of living or anything like that but i did it in a very structured manner so for the first time in my life possibly at the age of uh, how old was i almost 40 or a little older than 40 uh, right i started actually making and following a monthly household budget so for 3 4 months i just start kept entering and the fact is that if you start consciously uh, noting down what you're spending your money on you become conscious about spending it even at a you know subconscious level that's what it uh, it starts and after 3 or 4 months i knew that okay here's my average spend pattern this is when i arrived at a budget for myself not on a total monthly level but on each of those heads and then it used to be fun to say oh this month i managed to save from this head and you know then i could give myself a little treat or put it against a maybe a, a new watch i wanted to buy or anything like that so this gave me the discipline of uh, being very thoughtful and uh, mindful about spend spends which uh, you know and this is not something uh, you should do only when you're in a position like this this is something everybody should do and the moment we do that we actually do realize uh, that there are a lot of money we just you know oh, we don't even think twice going and having that coffee at uh, you know starbucks or wherever you know you just go and do that and the whim uh, catches you you go and buy a new top do you do you really need it so it's not about being stingy but about being uh, mindful about how you spend your money so this is the uh, and this like i said since i was doing it every literally every day and every few days i would look at the longer term plan sheet which i'll just talk about it gave me a great comfort it was almost like a ritual which is why i said it was like my rosary bead so at every night i would do this and see oh, okay i'm fine and all's well with the world you know so it really helped me come to terms and navigate so this really became a very very useful tool for me and uh, the other thing was of course now that i had my assets consolidated i um, had this other excel sheet and i was uh, you know because there are in in our age when you're crossing 45 and you're wrong side of 45 most adults are struggling with job losses and whether we'll buy get another job again or anything like that we don't know so you need to have a contingency planning that what if i didn't have another job how am i going to sustain myself so once i you know which is which which is what led me to a decision about uh, selling the house for example uh, and then putting the money in ways where i could pay myself a salary out of what the money was earning for me and that salary is the in inflow so now out of the rosary beads i need to know how you overcame the odds and what are the fun things you did after you found your wings archana tell me about that the wings that we find when we are you know in our 40s and in our 50s is a wing that is absolutely of a different level we're not fluttering anymore like a metaphor we've actually found the wings what are the fun things that you did uh i think the biggest thing i've done for myself is through all the things which i've done in the last few years be it going back to my reading trying to go back to my writing uh just being myself totally being totally unapologetic about being a so called failure you know in my marriage or uh, anything i just became totally in love with myself so i think i taught myself and i'm not saying like i forced myself to but it this is how it evolved the moment you get comfortable in your own skin the moment you start loving yourself that's when you can take flight what about dating uh <laughs> well <laughs> maybe there's somebody out there still but i'm uh, you know like i said right you still now believe i believe in love uh yes why not uh but you know i again i i think the love i believe in is that each person should love themselves the most i'm not talking about being selfish here but you should love yourself fully uh before you get into any relationship because if you're not you don't love yourself your confidence will not be very very high and then when these shake ups come or uh, you know like we've seen a lot of women get told that ye paise ki baat hai tumko nahi pata padega you know there's oh, money i will handle it oh, yeah, so absolutely. all of that and many other uh, forms of gaslighting uh, which happen to a lot of women um you know so that's why a woman needs to know how to love herself first so you know after in the, in the last few years that's something which i've really come into and i you know i just started loving my own company so now if somebody comes into my space very well and good and you know it has to be 
really that kind of a, a situation otherwise i'm i mean where is the time <laughs> to be honest there's so much to do you know one of the first things i did uh, was uh, coincided with my younger one going away to college i took my first solo trip ever and uh, in this you know i visited like canada many cities in canada there are a couple of places where i had friends so I had that comfort of visiting them and then i went to montreal and quebec which are totally french speaking and i don't know french but with my you know merci beaucoup and bonjour and showing the map this is where i want to go i managed how lovely so i i got over that fear of oh how can i travel on my own and i made so many friends on that trip i need you to tell a little bit more about how you took that first plunge about traveling because lots of women are very very frightened including me uh well i think i i just love uh, traveling and we had been doing that off and on as a family you know maybe not as 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 the kids grew we had started doing a lot of uh, international travels and we were traveling a bit and this is something i just totally adore so this is something which i did not want to uh, stop it doesn't stop right and it should go on and right now i actually don't even have to worry about okay who who will like what and what will they like to eat etc i could just go do anything which i wanted right so uh, i just uh, and this was also a very uh, you know a tough time in the sense that my second one was also going away to college so i didn't want to come my god empty home. nest i did not want to come absolutely home. <laughs> so i decided that before i come home and deal with that let me you know kind of just mark this whole passing of uh, you know it's literally a passing uh, of rights so, so i i just wanted to go and do something special for myself because for the last 2 3 years i had navigated all of that i you know uh consolidated my finances got my son off to college and i dropped him and now i was totally i had to face a life alone so why not start it with a fun thing so that was the uh, you know and here again i have my excel sheet where i you know there is there are different sheets in that whole excel file so where i start with okay here are the destinations i want to go to so if i have decided on a country i would identify what are the places i want to go to how many days do i want to stay in each of those and uh, therefore do i do hotel do i do airbnb this was the first time i actually dared to do airbnb you know and it was a wonderful experience so i just put that down again make the budget and uh, since i know i mean i mean this one of course was after my excel sheet was already in place so i had been saving away for this uh, trip so i could just go and uh, you know enjoy myself so you know th- those are the kind of little uh, rewards which women like to give themselves so when you're doing all your financial planning and uh, you know taking it every you know you should be aware this is what women want so you know uh, so that's how yeah i i started planning it and uh, since then i've been doing it every other year or every year whenever often with just my girlfriends couple of times just alone and uh, sometimes of course even with my kids so it's uh, but then i plan everything again using this uh, you know excel sheet and, and do my bookings and everything and uh, yeah just just love to travel lovely so you know what i will share a quote that i find extremely interesting by uh, joan rivers who's this american talk show host and it says people say that money is not the key to happiness but i always figured if you have enough money you can get a key made <laughs> absolutely so please uh, whoever our listeners please know that you can get the key made if you can know how to manage your money and before i end today's podcast i have a few pertinent facts to share that women across the world have much less to spend and even lesser to save the world economic forum global gender gap report 2020 says men and women will only have pay equality in 257 years my heart breaks as i read this of the 153 countries studied for the report india ranks 112th on the overall global gender gap index for many women especially from the lower income jobs and the informal sector saving is a luxury that they cannot even imagine or afford thank you so much arshana for being on today's podcast i look forward to having more conversations with you going forward and i think empowerment means financial independence thank you so much for being here today absolutely thank you bhava thank you for having me to you our dearest listeners you can find us on your favorite streaming services spotify amazon music apple podcast and of course on all other major streaming services with loads of love we are the mohua show where we talk imandari se